What's up, guys? It's your boy, Pep Fernandez from the Inland Sports Show. I just want to take this opportunity to say thank you. Thank you for your support um, over the last several years. In fact, we're going on year number eight of the Inland Sports Show. It has certainly changed and evolved over the years, and you guys have been along for the entire journey. So thank you very much. We really appreciate it. We're on social media, so if you're already following us or subscribing, great. Um, but you can also tell your teammates, your uh, people at school, your family, Family, your friends, there's the Inland Sports YouTube channel uh, approaching 2 million views. We got several thousand subscribers. We appreciate it. And make sure you share uh, with other folks who might not be subscribing. Same goes for Twitter. We're on Twitter as well. And if you're looking for immediate results, breaking news, we post pictures and shorter videos. Check us out on Twitter. That's Inland underscore sports on Twitter. And we're also on Facebook. Yeah, we're still doing Facebook. In fact, we live stream the Inland Sports Show on YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook. So if you're on Facebook, you can check it out there live on Wednesday nights at 6.05 p.m. We're also on the gram, the IG. Uh, if you want to see pictures and shorter videos from a lot of the games and events that we go to, you can check it out on Instagram. So if you support us by following along on social media, thank you so much. And if you'd like to take that to the next level, Inland Sports also has a Venmo account. If you'd like to financially support the show, you appreciate the service we provide to the IE, you can do that as well. Again, this is just an opportunity to say thank you to all you guys out there who follow the Inland Sports Show. You watch the Inland Sports Show each and every week. Thank you guys so much, and the best is yet to come. is up. Welcome to the Inland Sports Show. I'm your host, Pep Fernandez. We appreciate you tuning in each and every Wednesday night, 6.05 p.m., breaking down all kinds of Inland Empire sports. But if you've watched the show the last couple of weeks, and tonight will be no different, a lot of high school football as we are so close to the 2022 football season, week zero next Friday. Although there are some Thursday night games, as you're about to hear in just a moment. A little bit later in the show, we'll have Rich McClure from San Gorgonio talking about his Spartans this season. We'll also talk college hoops with Rick, McCro uh, Rick Croy, the head coach for CBU men's basketball. Coach Croy will join us as well as Redlands High School volleyball coach Kareen Flowers. And uh, the Terriers coming off a, a big tournament title at the Queens Court. A little preseason action, but the Terriers look really, really good. Uh, but right now, high school football, this guy's one of our favorites, and he's leading things off tonight on the Inland Sports Show. He is the new head football coach for the Rancho Verde High School. Uh, it is Eric Zomal. And, and coach, Coach, you know, week zero is next week, and I feel like every year football season creeps up on me. I'm like, I, I can't believe we're having real games, but I feel like it's just really, really early this year. Am I wrong? No, it, it, it does feel like that. Like, as we you know, I tell the kids that, you know, when I was in school, uh, Labor Day weekend was our first game of the, se uh, of the season, and so... So now it's just as we've gone and then they added week zero and I'm not sure exactly, you know, if it's like how the calendar evolves, but it just, it feels like summer, you know, ends a lot sooner than you expect. And, and then that anxiety kicks in, man, it's Monday. I was like, we are heading down to, to Chaparral High School and, and we better, you know, we better bring it for sure. Well, coach, we'll, we'll get to your scrimmage against Chaparral uh, in just a moment, but you know, here we are, you know, a week away from your first real game, about a week away um, playing at Palm Desert. Um, what have you liked about your squad since you've been able to get helmets and pads on? What, have impre what has impressed you about your Mustangs? You know, I mean, there, there's still a, a ton of talent, you know, on, uh, on the Rancho Verde's campus. And so um, it, it starts with our quarterback, Landon, who's he's a senior and he's been in the program for, you know, four years and, and, and Coach Duffy did a great job, you know, teaching him the game. And Coach Six, um, you know, really helped him grow uh, at that position. But their skill, you know, our offense, uh, our tailback, Dylan Riley, and, and uh, our receivers are, we've I mean, got a really competitive group. And so that offensively, 
is um is is you know where Rancho kind of has really you know earned their reputation as just being a really skilled really skilled uh, football program. But we've got on both sides of the ball, I mean, we've got some really outstanding football players. Our defense is anchored by um, a, a middle linebacker that uh, uh, you know I, I'll try to. Try not to, you know, give him too much praise, but it's my son, Johnny's on wall. But we have uh, a nose, a nose guard uh, in the middle, Cam, who does a great job, and a, and a couple of really good corners, and AJ Boone and Tyler Miles. And so, and just I don't want to name, you know, go through our whole roster, but there we do have some, some, some real, real deal talent. You know, Coach, I'm with you on the start of the season, this new high school football calendar, because I remember if a team had a game in August, I'm like, wow, they're starting early. Wow, playing a, playing a real game in August. And now, you know, we're like two weeks in, you know, into August, and we're already, you know, having some real games here. Um, let's talk about your, your scrimmage with Chaparral first. You, what, what are you hoping to see from out of your team? Obviously, I don't know who else is there, but we know Chaparral's always a good team. Coach Raymer does such a great job down there with the Pumas. But what are you hoping to see from your side? You know, I'm really just hoping to see our kids first and foremost, really just compete. You know, I mean, it's the first time that we, everything that we've done up until this point where we've had a chance to, um, to face another team, the kids have, you know, really kind of risen to the occasion and showed a competitive spirit. And so I hope that this first time in pads, when you do stuff, we try to do stuff like inner squad stuff, but it, it's not, you know, it's not the same as seeing somebody in a different jersey who you're not as familiar with. Um, I want to see our kids uh, get after it. You know, I know it'll be really challenging, uh, you know, up front just because Chaparral and their program and, and, and the type of um, the level of football that they play at. I mean, that, that super conference that they're in now, I'm sure has, has everybody uh, on point. And so being able to hopefully hold our own uh, up front and then letting our skill our, our, our skill kind of show what it's capable of. You know, Coach, obviously we know that you're, you know, a first-year head coach with the Mustangs. You, you know, you got to campus a couple months ago. But, you know, for the returning players on your team, did, is there like a sense of pride that they want to kind of reestablish what Rancho Verde used to be and, you know, kind of that winning tradition? Like if they, they're coming in like, hey, guys, we got to get the, you know, the, the ship going in the, in, the, in the right direction again. Like we, you know, last year was, a, you know, not what, 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 not what we're about. We got to show people that we're still Rancho Verde. I mean, I, I hope so, you know, but it, it, regardless of like, like, you know, those, that incredible kind of roster of talent uh, that they had in the past is not, you know, they're not walking through the door. So these kids have to earn it, you know, your reputation that, that only that lasts for maybe a snap when you, you know, in the pregame warm up, and then they, they can find out if you, if you're, you know, you're really uh, ready to represent Rancho Verde uh, the right way. And so, I hope that their, you know, pride, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, kicks in and they want to reestablish and, 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 you know, reposition this program. But really it's just for me, you know, I'm new. I wasn't a part of the Rancho Verde history. We've had, you know, some kids like my son and, you know, a couple other kids that, that weren't a part of the, the you know, Rancho Verde kind of past that just, I hope have a chip on their shoulder regardless. Like, we have to compete and we have to win. Well, Coach, I, I don't want to sound like a baby or that I'm whining here, but it's hot outside, and I know you guys are going on the road to Palm Desert to open up the season, probably one of the hottest places on the planet to play some high school football. But uh, talk about the, the matchup with a traditionally good Palm Desert team. They're traditionally, you know, pretty strong. Um, talk about that matchup and, and, and the heat and the, what the Aztecs might, you know, kind of the, the challenges they might pose to you guys. No, for sure. I mean, you know, try not to get too far ahead of ourselves because of how, like, this scrimmage would be a, a, an exceptional, you know, kind of gauge for for what, um, you know, where we are as a program. But just from what I've been able to see, we haven't I haven't gone against Palm Desert in years. I do know we went against Palm Desert years ago, but I do know that that heat is is definitely a factor. It's one of the reasons why we went early uh, today and. Um, just to try to get the kids to understand that, like a kickoff, it's probably going to be close to 100 degrees. So we just have to, we have to get past that, you know, um, I don't know, kind of mindset of like misery and like it's, you know, I tell the kids it's hot everywhere. It's not just hot, you know, on our turf. So, um, so I'm excited about it. I mean, they do a great job out there in representing, you know, for the, uh, you know, in the, in the desert. And so, um, you know, we're excited for the challenge for sure.
You know, Coach, I could be wrong, but I think they play on real grass. Does that sound right? Yes. Yes. And that, that really is, it surprised me. I didn't, I didn't realize when we went to Palm Desert. And so that was kind of like a saving race. We <laughs> took the field. And it was a little bit cooler than that turf heats up, man. It gets so hot. So, yes, I think all those schools out there play on grass, which, which definitely helps. But it's still, you know, 100 degrees on turf or grass is still hot for sure. You know, finally, Coach, I hate to look too far down the road, but when I look at the Ivy League, man, I think in terms of all the leagues in the Inland Empire that we cover, I think the Ivy League is going to be the most competitive league in terms of crowning a league champion. I feel like any of those teams, including yourself, has a chance to win that league championship. Are, are you excited about the opportunity of, of going in the Ivy League? You're going to see Orange Vista. You're going to see your brother. You're going to see Heritage again. Like, I mean, there's all these great matchups looming in league play. No, for sure. I mean, that, that in itself, and that, I, you know, I, I want to, like everybody, want to take it one game at a time. But I think that is such a unique situation when a lot of leagues are really top heavy and you can, yeah. you know, you can tell who one, two and three are going to be just about every year. And um, and, it, and it like legitimately, it could finish in any order. You know, we could have like a three way tie for first, you know, in that league. I mean, there's, there's a like a, a real you know, sense of like, you know, parity um, in, in that in that league, which I think will make competitive games, fun games, week in and week out. You don't have to try to manufacture, you know, sometimes when we're really rolling at Citrus, we had to kind of try to manufacture some, you know, disrespect or, you know, some motivation. And, um, but that that won't be the case at all this year. And, that, and that's really for every game. I mean, we have a, a schedule that I think is challenging every week, which is good. Well, Coach, I, I don't know if we'll have like that. I think it was the River Valley League that had like a five-way tie for first place that one. It was like five years ago or something like that. It was, it was wacky. I don't know if we'll have that in the Ivy League, but I think it's going to be super fun uh, this upcoming season. Coach, best of luck uh, in the scrimmage against Chaparral. And again, uh, next Thursday night. It's Thursday night, right? On the road? Thursday night. Desert? Yes, sir. Thursday night. I'll put Palm Desert in the heat. And, uh, you know, I hope, we, uh, I hope we come to play for sure. Coach, always appreciate your time. I love having you on the show, and uh, let's do this again soon, man. But best of luck this week and next week as you get things going for real. Yes, sir. Thanks, Trevor. I appreciate you, man. These kids, coaches, I know you hear it all the time, and, and I hope it doesn't get old, man, but, but what you do is amazing for these kids and uh, these programs in the IE. We appreciate you. Well, I, I sincerely appreciate that, Coach. That is Eric Zomalt, the head football coach for the Rancho Verde High School. Join us here on the Inland Sports Show. We really appreciate his time. Uh, that'll take us into our first commercial break of the show. When we come back, we'll make a stop at San Gorgonio. We will hit, hear from Rich McClure. They got a, a legacy ceremony coming up on Saturday he's going to talk about. So we'll talk to San G when we come back here on the Inland Sports Show. Hey, this is Ken Wyshynski, the head football coach of Ramona, and you're watching the Inland Sports Show. Jason at Ken Sporting Goods. We're almost to 1,000 Instagram followers. Tell your friends, like us, come down, see us. Thank you so much for your loyalty. Right here at the Boost Performance Center with Coach Ray Bass, a.k.a. the Boost Man, with another grit iron question. Good one this week, Coach, uh, as we, we want to know, is there a secret to training athletes that other athletic trainers, they, they wouldn't say anything. They want to keep their lips sealed. Absolutely. 
There's no methodology, no advanced drill, no trainer who can take you to the next level if you're not willing to put in the work. You can't wait for someone else to make it happen for you because in reality, it's all on you. You know, there's athletes that'll say, I need to train with this piece of equipment or I need to train with these types of people. But again, in reality, it's all on you as the athlete. Now, don't get me wrong, Pep. Being a knowledgeable and skilled trainer is important, but it's less about what I do for my athletes and more about what they need to do for themselves. All right, coach, secrets revealed right here at Boost Performance Training. That is the Boost man himself, Ray Bass. And you can send us a question for a future great iron question right here at Boost by hitting the DMs all over Boost Training on social media. Welcome back to the Inland Sports Show, everybody. Again, a big thanks to Eric Zomo at the Rancho Verde High School for joining us. And our football coverage rolls on as we go to San Gorgonio. The head coach of the Spartans, Rich McClure, joining us here live on the Inland Sports Show, talking more football. And, uh, you know, Coach, I was talking to Coach Zomo about the same thing, that I just feel like the high school football season – it starts earlier and earlier. Maybe it's not necessarily earlier, but it feels earlier being like the third week of August having week zero. I mean, does it creep up on you ever? Because it creeps up on me the start of the season. Well, if you've been going since uh, like May, no, uh, <laughs> because we've been doing it this whole time. So, uh, you know, our kids are really, really excited about not hitting each other and, and trying to go and, and play against somebody else because, you know, they've been – on each other for now for you know dozen weeks or so and so they're really excited about having the opportunity good or bad uh to kind of find out where they are so coach i know this is scrimmage week you know for all those week zero teams this is scrimmage week and uh, you'll have bloomington next week but uh who are you playing in your scrimmage and then what are you hoping to see from uh from san g in that scrimmage uh well we hooked up with paris high school and uh so we're going to go down there we uh we had a, a fairly competitive uh, game against them. Uh, we tried to get them on our schedule. It didn't work out. And um, uh, we reached out to them. They, they re returned a favor. And so we're looking forward to a good uh, game simulation type scrimmage. So uh, we're excited about going down to Paris High School. So, Coach, when you go into a scrimmage, um, you know, obviously you're not keeping score. So what, what are you exactly looking for? Are you looking to give certain guys a certain number of snaps? You're trying to look at formations? Like, what's, what's the goal of the scrimmage for you? Well, for us, it's about situational football. And so, I, you know, we, we get into this situation and we practice to everything. But now it's how is a kid going to react to a situation, a uh, live fire type scenario, even though it's – you know, it's a scrimmage and, you know, there's no games on the line, you know, from wins and losses and all that stuff. But we want to find out from that added intensity, where's that kid, what kind of decisions do they make? And then how can we correct those uh, from a standpoint of evaluation? Because getting grades is the biggest part of what we do. So grading these players, um, we actually have a little bit of depth now. So uh, we got twos that want to be one. And, and uh, given the opportunity, uh, see what they're made of for the following weeks. So, Coach, you know, going into this season, um, you know, with the, with the guys that you got, where do, where do you feel like this team will be strong at? And do you feel like, you know, this is a team that kind of, you know, will get Sanji hopefully back on track? Well, the biggest thing is, is that we've had, um, we have three quarterbacks, which uh, is a big luxury. I haven't had that in two years. And so, uh, being able to use the forward pass part of our offense has kind of been an exciting part of our spring. So we're excited about that. Our skill guys are excited because they, you know, haven't seen the ball in the air. And so uh, we're, we're definitely going to take advantage of that, spread the field, try and get more people out of the box, uh, still run the ball. That's kind of been our thing since, you know, I got here. And so we're still going to do that, but uh, we want to be able to mix it up, find a good combination so that we can be balanced on offense 
and then play good team team offense as well and not just score really fast and um, you know keep our defense off the field so Coach, I'm not trying to steal your thunder, but maybe the cat's already out of the bag with that cool helmet behind you and uh, going with that baby blue uh, at, at San G, but kind of a, a rebranding, right, for the Spartans this season? Yeah, we, you know, like I told you before, we were talking before we came on is, you know, for us, it's been a very, very hard two years. Uh, San Bernardino uh, struggled really, really, uh, you know, it, it was a really tough time for all of our families. And so at our legacy breakfast, uh, you know, on Saturday, it's really what we're going to talk about is trying to get, trying to get back to, trying to get back to normal, trying to do normal things. And so we've changed, changed the helmet, same helmet inside, uh, but just put a different paint on the outside, give it a little bit of different look, and it matches our uniforms a little bit more. Uh, you know, and nowadays, uh, you know, all of our athletes. Uh, they see, you know, the 12 different helmet colors that the college has got. So, you know, we got one. I, I got asked today, do we still get to use blue? Or are we going to get uh, shields? We're going to, you know, all kinds of stuff. That's what they're worried about. I'm worried about trying to get first down. So, <laughs> Well, Coach, you, you touched on it. You mentioned the legacy ceremony. Wh wh again, why is that important to your team? And, and what are you hoping the, the well, you know, what are you hoping that will really resonate with your players and maybe even your, your coaching staff as well? Well, again, this is a, another situation we haven't been able to get together for, you know, over three years. And so an opportunity to get families together and bring them together. Everybody's so busy, um, you know, administrators and teachers and, and community people and so on, that we finally get the opportunity to come together in a safe environment and share some share some time together, uh, you know, and, and put put go through the process of, uh, you know, decorating our helmets. And, you know, it's just like sport, uh, Spartan lore, I mean, you're you're getting ready to to go off for you know not necessarily war, but a competition, and you want to be you want to remember those people around you, and that's what the legacy is. Is you know every time they put the helmet on and the uniform on, I, I want them to remember who they are, what they're representing, and not just the school, but their families as well. And it, it's a really it, it's just it, it it's like collegiately, you know, I was a part of it for 20 years, where it was the kickoff. It, it would kick off dinner and had media and those type of things, but it, it really symbolizes the end of training and the beginning of preparation for competition. You know, Coach, finally, uh, you, you mentioned a lot of teams, a lot of cities got hit hard uh, during the pandemic in terms of just numbers, like just, you know, kids, you know, boys and girls coming out for sports and obviously football got hit real hard. You mentioned you got more depth this year. Are, are numbers better? And are you excited about, again, just having more players in the program? Well, um, you know, two years ago, we had 12 kids that uh, finished a half a game. Uh, we're, we're at practice right now with about 73, 74 healthy bodies. So, um, that, that makes a big difference. You can actually practice against each other. Uh, two years ago, we went into our first game, uh, against rim and our first contact was the first play of the game. Uh, we just literally couldn't, couldn't have any contact and everybody knows you train football players, contacts about everything. And so knowing and understanding that you can't train that way, you know, it just wasn't a very healthy environment. So to be able to get back into that, to be able to train, to prepare um, sports specifically, uh, it, it's huge for our program. And so having depth means you can't be lazy, can't be, uh, you know, can't be a prima donna. You got to show up every day. You got to work hard. Somebody's going to take your spot. So. Well, Coach, I always appreciate your time. I'm looking forward to the legacy ceremony this Saturday at San G. And then here we go. Uh, get the scrimmage in the rearview mirror right into that first game uh, against Bloomington the following week. So, Coach, thank you so much. I will see you Saturday, and I always appreciate your time. Thank you very much for having us on. You got it. That is Rich McClure, the head football coach for San Gorgonio here on the Inland Sports Show. We'll take another quick break when we come back. Head coach Rick Croy from CBU Men's Basketball will join us live going over the schedule and some really great new players coming into the Lancer program. That is next here on the Inland Sports Show. This is Citrus Hill head coach Jordan Tanioka, and you're watching the Inland Sports Show.
What up, y'all? Boost Man here, gonna break you off with another quick two cent. For successful athletes, it can sometimes look easy, but make no mistake, it's not. You see, most of the gritty work is done behind the scenes. No gram, no snap, no Twitter. They don't do it for the show, and they don't go through the motions. In fact, they don't tell you what they're doing or planning. You only find out when the job is done, and at that point, it looks as easy as child's play. Boost Man. For, for anything else, say this, that the Padres for years and years did nothing, right, in terms of getting, like, big-name players. And all of a sudden, the last couple of years, they went all in. Like, they're getting all these uh, all-stars to come to San Diego. And uh, now it's going to be the trick to, you know, can you keep Juan Soto? Can you give him a huge contract and keep him there? Or, you know, is he a rental? Is he? It, it's all in this year. World Series are bust, right, for the Padres. So we'll see how that pan, pans out in the future. But as of right now, yeah, Padres are loaded up uh, to challenge the Dodgers. We we all heard these rumblings at, in the offseason that Tom Brady thought about going to the Miami Dolphins. And, and Sean Payton, the former head coach of the Dallas Cowboys, was thinking about, you know, going with Tom Brady to the Miami Dolphins. Well, now the NFL has hit the Dolphins owner, Stephen Ross, with not only a one and a half million dollar fine, but the owner, the owner of the team is suspended from the team until like the middle of October. They lost some draft picks all for trying to get, you know, Tom Brady. It was tampering. They, could, they couldn't talk to him yet. And I, I feel like maybe there's writing on the wall that if Tom Brady, who's a free agent after this season, still wants to play beyond 45, maybe he still ends up in Miami. Uh, that's something to keep an eye on, I suppose. Hey, welcome everybody back to the Inland Sports Show live and amplified here at Teen Vision TV 16. We're taking a, a brief Respite from high school football. We're talking a lot of pigskin these days as we lead up to uh, week zero next week. But you can bet at California Baptist, the basketball teams are hard at work getting ready for a very uh, fun and interesting schedule coming up this year. Uh, join us live. Rick Croy, the head basketball coach for the men's side, for the Lancers. And, and Coach Croy, I, I wanted to bring you on to talk about a bunch of different things. But, man, that non-conference schedule looks so good, so competitive. Um, you know, what, what do you think about that non-conference schedule as you try to, you know, get your team ready for hopefully a, a March Madness run at the end of the year? Yeah, well, Pep, thanks for having me. And we are definitely excited about the schedule. Um, it's got a little bit of everything. It's got a great home opener, Long Beach State, November 7th. Uh, a couple Big West opponents. Um, great uh, Pac-12 road game at Washington. And then, you know, some <clears throat> some unbelievable competition uh, in Orange County in, in a uh, multi-team event. We open up against Minnesota. So it's um, chock full of great competition. I think our fans are really going to enjoy it, and our group's excited about it. You know, Coach, when you build that non-conference schedule, obviously you want to play good teams. Maybe you want to go into some hostile environments. Um, is it all to kind of prepare your guys so they've seen everything before they get to Western Athletic Conference play? Yeah, you know, I think your schedule, you, you try and align it with where you're at in the journey, and that's what we've tried to do. You know, it's, um, it's our time. We're eligible. We've got a great group of returners. We think we had a great recruiting class. Uh, right now, we're trying to put it all together in these early stages of our summer work. Uh, and then we know we got a lot of work in front of us, but I think the schedule fits um, our group. You know, I think we've got solid maturity. Uh, we've got guys with some experience under their belt. So 
You know, it, it really depends where you're at. I think we've played some good schedules um, in the past couple of years based upon where we were at in the journey. And um, that's what I think this one is. I think it fits um, what our guys are ready for. You know, Coach, I know you always go into the season, you know, with a lot of passion and excitement to be out there coaching and being around your guys. But this year, does it feel a, a little amped up, you know, just a little bit more because you are eligible for the NCAA tournament. You can win a WAC tournament championship. You can go to the big dance. I mean, that's pretty exciting. It is exciting. And I think our guys did a great job. And I think our university did a really good job of focusing on, on the positives. You know, we weren't when we were in the transition, we weren't going to complain about anything. We weren't going to worry about anything outside of our control. And we, we really built a fan base. We did that with our student body. We did that in the community. We've worked hard at it. We've stayed at the task. Uh, we're re really proud of, um, you know, the fan base that's been built here in Riverside and in the Inland Empire. And we're excited to represent. We know, uh, we know it is different and it's, it's exciting and uh, it's hard to believe it's here. Uh, but the guys are gearing up. Coach, let's let's talk about your returning players real quick. Obviously, the Armstrong brothers um, and, and Taryn Armstrong, who is one of the top freshmen in the entire country, period. Uh, talk about your, your returning guys and all that wealth of experience that they're going to have as you make that push again for a, for a whacked you know, championship and going on to the big dance. Yeah, some exciting players with, with great experience. Uh, both in our program and in the WAC, uh, you know, Taz, uh, Taryn Armstrong, we call him Taz, pass first point guard, elite competitor, was freshman of the year in the WAC. And even though he's only got one year of experience under his belt, he kind of went through everything last year. You know, he played so well at the beginning, garnered a ton of national attention, and then out of nowhere gets hit with mono. And that took him out for, you know, five, six weeks. And when he came back, we had to throw him right back into the fire. So he's a very experienced sophomore. Uh, you mentioned his brother, Trey. Trey's a fourth-year player for us, has great leadership qualities, can really shoot the basketball. So we've got some, some really good experience in, in the backcourt. Scotty Washington's an exciting player out of St. John Bosco. He redshirted last year, can really score the ball. I think our fans are going to love watching him play. He's going to be a great lancer for years to come. Reed Nottage, uh, who had a tremendous sophomore season. And then last year, um, got knocked off balance a bit with some injuries, battled a, a number of different injuries, and we're expecting great things from him this year. Jelani Stone came out of nowhere last year and um, really fun to coach. Very, very, very coachable player. Very detailed in his work, and, and he continues to improve almost daily. Uh, Keanu Rasmussen's another guy that redshirted last year. Malik Wade, um, out of Brazil. He, a lot like Reed, battled injuries last year. Uh, backed up Gorjot Gak as a freshman. Got some great experience. And then uh, last year was a tough go for him. So, you know, you hope to, uh, in this day and age in college basketball, we, we've always kind of been a hybrid. You know, we got guys with continuity coming back and, and then yet you have to add to your roster in real time. And in this, in this day in 2022, that means the portal. And we think we got a great, a great class, uh, a group that that really fits our university and guys that guys that want to win, you know, they, they really put a huge uh, emphasis and priority on winning and they're demonstrating that every day. They're hard at work. And, you know, we got a lot of work to do to gel as a unit uh, and we've got some time, but, uh, we also can't waste it. Uh, you know, we know every day we're in the gym matters and it's, it's a fun group to coach. You know, Coach Croy, when, when you go out there and whether you're, you're getting incoming freshmen or maybe you're, you're getting some transfers through the portal, um, you know, I, I'm sure when you, when you talk to these guys about joining CBU, it must be exciting to say, hey, you could be the very first team to get CBU, you know, you know, a, a conference championship or to, you know, the March Madness. Like, there, there's going to be a first team. It's going to happen. You guys could be the first one. Do you, is that, you know, part of the conversation when you talk to some of these guys? It is, you know, and I think it's a unique position to be in where, you know, this is our 10th year here as a coaching staff. So we, we have a culture. We have a winning tradition. But at the same time, there's these 
the, these new opportunities um, that, that are available that are on the board that haven't been done yet. So that's a, that's kind of a unique combination there. And, and we do recruit to that. We want guys that are excited about that challenge and lean into it. Uh, and we believe, again, we accomplished that with this class. And uh, now it comes down to doing the hard work together and, you know, I think having a mature group with a lot of college basketball reps under their belt, they understand how tough it's going to be. Um, you know, it's the WAC has improved significantly so, since we jumped in in 18, 19, and I think it's improved every year. And I think this year will be the strongest it's ever been. Well, finally, Coach, just looking at your team, I mean, when you were going over the returning players, you could build a pretty darn good starting five just with the, your, your returning players. And you bring in these new guys. Um, do you think you're going to have some hard decisions to make in terms of starting five and what that rotation might look like? Cause it sounds like you're going to have a really deep team with a lot of great players. Yeah. And I think what's been proven out over time um, in the best conferences, it, it, it takes depth and, and you got to have a lot of guys pouring in and um, certainly the guy, guys will make um, guys will make our decisions difficult based upon what they put forward every single day. Uh, with the consistency and their effort, attitude, coachability, execution, all those things. But um, I think our guys are very excited about the depth on our roster, the strength in numbers, the ability to really, uh, you know, step on the gas and go after this thing. We, we have not, we've had great players the last couple of years, but we have ha not really had depth in our program uh, since our 1920 season. Uh, and we did have really strong depth that year and it helped us tremendously. Um, so our guys are excited about it and, and they know ultimately, you know, we got to find a way to, uh, to keep getting better throughout the journey. And, you know, you got to be ready when, when March comes around to fire and, and your best chance to do that is going up against guys every single day, day in and day out in practice that can, that can make you better. Well, Coach, listen, I always appreciate your time. Love the schedule. Love the new guys coming in. Love the, the guys who are returning. I think it's going to be a really uh, fun and maybe historic season for California Baptist this upcoming year. And, I, Coach, I, I did want to say before I let you go, so my, my guilty pleasure uh, is iced coffees. Love, my, love a good iced yep. coffee. Uh, but I ran into you at a shaved ice place, and I think shaved ice might be your, your guilty pleasure at Bahama Bucks. Bahama Bucks and Redlands, <laughs> number one shave ice in the IE. Uh, my goal is to make it back out there one more time before school starts on September 6th. So we'll see how there's a good 50% chance if I make it out there, you're there. So <laughs> there probably is. Coach, always appreciate the time. He's a man of the people out there enjoying his shaved ice amongst us. That is head coach Rick Croy from CBU. Thank you so much, coach. Always appreciate it. You got it. That is Coach Croy here on the Inland Sports Show. When we come back, hey, we're actually going to Redlands because we're going to hear from uh, volleyball coach for the Terriers, Kareem Flowers, next here on the Inland Sports Show. What up, guys? Boost May here at the Boost Performance Center. You're watching the Inland Sports Show with the one and only Pep Fernandez. Calling all athletes. Make sure you're at your very best by training at Boost Performance Training in Corona. Whether you're a football player, soccer player, baseball player, lacrosse, athletes from all sports and all levels train at Boost Performance Training. Led by former Centennial High School football star Ray Bass, you'll develop explosive power, become faster, and add that lean muscle. Don't be left behind and get a leg up on the competition at Boost Performance Training. Visit BoostTrainingSystems.com for information on their training programs and also on the Bass School. That's the Bass Alternative School for student athletes. Trying to earn a scholarship? Maybe make the varsity team. Get a spot in the starting lineup? Well, let Boost Performance Training help achieve your athletic goals. I would say the one thing that uh, we stress more than anything else is service to our customer. Make sure that they're taking care of whatever you can do to make sure that that order gets to them on time and it's the right quality and, and what they want.
that way since 1976. That was my goal, to reach out to local uh, sports programs, and it's grown from there, and we've been very, very fortunate. My grandson is right over here. He's working for us, and he's going to college right now, and, and uh, that's exactly what my son did 20-some uh, years ago, and it keeps on going, you know. Customers that come in the store that it's amazing uh, people that I haven't been here since I was a little kid and I used to come in here all the time and then my now I'm bringing my son in here or, or a grandpa that's bringing his grandson in here that that came in here when we first opened back in 76 we just feel so fortunate to have been a part of this community and this Inland Empire uh, for going into our 44th year now, and um, it's just been a, a blessing. Welcome back to the Inland Sports Show, everybody. Yes, we're giving away four tickets to the Inland Empire 66ers every single week on the show. And uh, our big winner from this previous week is Carson Miller from Redlands. Uh, he is going to see the 66ers, I think, in fact, on Friday. So, Carson, if you're watching the show right now, uh, why don't you take a selfie at the game and send it to us? We'll put it on the Inland Sports uh, social media. So, congratulations to Carson and the Miller family. They are going to the Sixers, and you can, too. A new contest starts Right now, all you got to do is follow the Inland Sports Show on Twitter and Instagram and send us a DM with your name and the city you live in. And that's all you got to do to enter the contest. And if you entered previously, like the last couple of weeks, we will automatically re-enter you into this week's contest. So we'll be giving away four more tickets uh, to see the 66ers and their season's winding down. So you got to hurry. Time is running out. All right, in this segment, we're talking a little high school volleyball. You know, just like we've been talking football, you know, the season is already here. It's wild. Uh, she is the head coach for the Redlands Terriers. Coach Flowers joining us here on the show. And, and Coach, you know, real games, real matches start this upcoming week. Um, you know, Redlands, we'll talk about the Queens Court, but you guys were great at the Queens Court. Are you excited based on the success you had at Queens Court going into the season? Do you like your group? I do. Um, we have a, a solid team, a lot of team chemistry. Um, I'm excited to watch what they can accomplish. Obviously, preseason is preseason, but um, just looking forward to what we can do. We start our Norco tournament um, on Saturday, so that's our first CIF-sanctioned uh, event. Yeah, so the Queen's Corps is kind of that preseason thing. It doesn't, it doesn't count in your, your win-loss record. And I know some coaches go in because they're, you know, they're maybe adjusting their lineup and they want to see what certain players do. But you guys went in there and, and you won your division. Um, what did you guys do well at Queen's Court to, to bring home that championship? Um, one of the things I think we did was we just competed. Um, 
you know, it's a long tournament. It's hot in that gym. And after Sunday's pool play, we saw Chino Hills again, who's a solid team. Um, and we just came out fired up. So I think just digging deep, uh, playing a long day, um, and learning how to battle through breaks and seeing an opponent we already played. Um, I liked the competitive nature that we had. Yeah, and the Queens court, you know, if people aren't familiar, I mean, that's that's like all of Southern California. There's so many great teams and players and, and, and coaches uh, that go to Queens court. Uh, but coach, you mentioned, you know, it, it's going to get real. You know, that's, you know, next Saturday going to the Norco tournament. Um, are you hoping what you guys did at Queens court kind of carries over that same mentality, that that same, you know, perseverance and hard work and all those sorts of things kind of carries over into the real season? Yeah, I'm definitely um, looking forward to seeing some other people on the court, um, seeing how they can step up and carry uh, their position. Um, I have a couple girls on a sit out period, so they will be able to resume on the 13th of September, our league opener. So that's good. Um, but just giving girls a chance to step up and really, um, you know, build that chemistry. So we're uh, have a bench that I can turn to and that can step up in tight situations. Coach, you mentioned getting ready for league play. If anyone follows local volleyball and they watch the Inland Sports Show, you know, we have a number of local volleyball coaches on, and we know the CBL is so good. There's so many great programs. And, uh, you know, the, it, the addition of Beaumont a couple of seasons ago <laughs> to the CBL just made it even stronger. Uh, when you look at the CBL top to bottom, I mean, do you feel like Redlands has a chance when the dust settles to be one of those teams in the mix for that CBL championship at the end? Yes, I do. Um, I think we need to make sure that we stay humble and we stay hungry. Um, we have a lot to do to balance our offense. Um, but watching some of the other teams, we're going to be right there with them. Um, this is my 11th year. I've been chasing that CBL title. <laughs> I've lost it twice in five set matches. So I'm hoping that we can uh, just finish strong and keep going. You know, speaking of chasing that CBL title, you guys really turned things around, especially last year. Like, I, do you feel like, hey, we're, we're at least trending in the right direction? We're, we're, we're heading that way. <laughs> I do. Um, I've had some tough seasons um, with, you know, my win to loss ratio not being anything I wanted. But, um, you know, we have some talented players, some solid uh volleyball players who've been in the um, game for a long time and just great attitudes and always willing to work really hard. Well, Coach, let's do a little name dropping. Who are, who are going to be some of your top players this season? I know you have a big transfer from, from <laughs> Beaumont. She's a special player. But, you know, who are some of the players that you're going to lean on this season that you think will, you know, folks at home will be talking about? So um, I have a junior, Julia Tol Tolstova. She was a first team um, CBL, and she also made all CIF. Um, she was a sophomore outside hitter last year, and she is um, my, my first outside hitter. That's our go-to player. Um, Sanaya Sobers is my other outside. She's also on a sit out period. Um, she transferred from Cajon. She is a solid defensive player. Um, and she is very, very smart. Um, I have Bella Faroki, who's my returning libero who her and Julia passed a two man serve receive and just, uh, came through. And then, um, you know, Kaylee Joy and Diana Castro are my middles. Um, Lauren Ryder is going to be my setter um, for preseason for this first month. And she plays great, uh, you know, right back defense when uh, Maddie Brown will be able to play. So um, I'm confident that I'll have some players that come off off the bench. Um, I have a freshman who is a surprise. who has got a wicked serve. Um, so Ava Reyes will be in there. And then, you know, just... Um, I, I carried a smaller squad this year than I have in the past. So, you know, Ariana Romero and Eva LaRonda will get in there. And then uh, Ava Avila will split some time with my libero and um, back row. So um, I expect a lot of attention to be on Julia. She is our kill leader and um, she has, she's, she's fierce. So <laughs> Well, coach, you know, this happens in every sport, you know, football, too, because, you know, like you said, you have some players that come into the program and they might have to sit out, you know, 30 days or whatever that is. So the football team in, in week one might look a lot different when you get to week six because you have, a, you know, some some new faces um, that are eligible. So do you feel like, you know, with with the program, your program, like the younger players might get some great 
experience and playing time while some of these other players are waiting for their chance to you know see the court when league play begins that that maybe this might be a blessing in disguise for some other players to really get some uh, get some good minutes out on the court. Yeah, so Lauren Ryder is um, my sophomore setter. And um, before I got the transfer from Beaumont, she was going to be running the court no matter what. So I'm really excited to see her step up um, and to, you know, set the ball for my my big outside and my middles, um, she, gain some confidence. She was a starter last year as a freshman in the DS position, and she came up big in CIF playoffs. Um, so, you know, looking to the future, I have Maddie for a year um, since she's a senior. And... Uh, Lauren is the future of our setting for the next two years after that. So um, I think that she will rise to the occasion. I'm excited to see her run the court for sure. So that's exciting for me. You know, Coach, too, like, you know, obviously you guys are built to win right now, but it sounds like you also have a foundation of some great younger players that you're, you should be in good shape, right, for, for the foreseeable future. Yeah, I was actually just, I did my freshman tryouts for my freshman team um, today and, you know, looking at who we're going to graduate, we just have a few positions next year, um, which is tough, but it's also good that we have our core group coming back. Um, we're going to lose our libero uh, and one of our middles and obviously um, one of our setters. Um, but I see that position, those positions being filled um, either on my JV team or um the people who I have coming in off the bench for them. Coach, when you look at your non-league schedule, uh, you know, I don't have it in front of me, but the, t the teams that you're going to face, the Norco tournament, those sorts of things, <laughs> you know, that level of competition, do you, th you feel like that's going to get you ready for the same level of competition you'll see in the CBL? Because you already know, we could talk about Beaumont and Ukaipa <laughs> and Cajon had a great season last year. Like, oh, yeah. You're going to see some really good teams. Yeah, so we see um, our, I just got our Norco schedule. We see Etiwanda and Norco, good, solid teams from the beginning. Um, and then we go into league play or not league play, sorry, preseason with Serrano and Roosevelt, both solid teams, saw Roosevelt at um, Queens Court and they, they are good. Um, and then, you know, so I try to um, s set my schedule with the competition that I want my uh, players to play you know, be ready for. Mm -hmm. um, we moved up two divisions, which I'm a little bit bummed about. Um, <laughs> so we're going to see those, um, see those, that level of competition throughout the season. You guys were too good last year. That was the problem. You were too good last year. <laughs> <laughs> you got bumped up. And finally, coach, you know, I'm a Redlands guy. I live in Redlands. Uh, is there a sense of, you know, city pride in terms of, you know, those rivalry games with Citrus Valley and, and Redlands East Valley? Like who, who's the best in Redlands? And I, I know, R H, like you said, RHS, you've had some good years and you've had, you know, some not so good years. But um, you know, that friendly rivalry between the schools and Redlands. Yeah, so I'm not from Redlands. I'm from the San Diego area, and I came up here through the U of R. And so, you know, when I came to Redlands Unified, um, I had no idea about the long blue line and all that tradition. <laughs> and now being a part of it, oh, I feel it. Like, you know, it was tough losing to Beaumont. Of course, we wanted to win league, but, you know, we beat CV and we beat Rev. And, and so, you know, hopefully Redlands High School will be the volleyball school, and this is where people will want to come to play volleyball. Yeah, those are those are big, big matches uh, in CBL play. Coach Flowers, thank you so much for your time. This was a lot of fun. I really appreciate it. And uh, best of luck as you guys get things going at the Norco tournament. That's exciting. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. You got it. That is Coach Flowers, Redlands Volleyball here on the Inland Sports Show. Really appreciate the time. And that's going to do it. Big thanks to Coach Flowers, Coach Zomo at Rancho Verde. Of course, we had Coach McClure, San Gorgonio, and Coach Rick Croy from CBU Men's Basketball all on this show. The biggest shout out of all to our director, Johnny Nunez, behind the scenes here at Teen Vision TV 16. My name is Pep Fernandez. Stay safe out there. God bless you. And we will see you next time at the start of the high school football season, week zero next week. We'll talk about it right here on the Inland Sports Show. We'll see you then.